Hello students, welcome back to our channel Puttek Online. Hope you all are doing good. So today we look at few important multiple choice question answers for the examination, entrance examination for CFTRI that is Central Food Technological Research Institute. So this will be our set one. So let us proceed. Okay, Foodtech Online, they're soon going to launch an ebook for all the aspirants, those who want to pursue this MSc in Food Technology in CFTRI. So, this ebook actually it will cover the subjects, those are physics, chemistry, bio biology, mathematics, microbiology, food chemistry, and nutrition, uh, and agriculture and dairy technology, and food engineering. So, there's a contact number given over here. You can contact over here and get the details about it. So now let us proceed. So question number one, um, growth of bacteria or microorganisms basically it refers to, so options are si increase in the size of an individual organism and increase in the mass of an individual organism or change in the total population or an increase in the number of cells. So over here, uh, the growth of a bacteria or microorganisms basically it refers to an increase in the number of cells. So over here, my correct option will be D, that is an increase in the number of cells uh, rather than an increase in the size or mass of an individual organisms. While we can say the size or the mass of an individual bacterial cell, uh, they might change slightly, but the primary uh, indicator of this microbial uh, growth is the increase in the number of cells. So over here, my correct option will be D, that is an increase in the number of cells. Question number two, which of the following bacterial species is divided by fragmentation? So options are Bacillus subtilis, Streptococcus faecalis, Rhodopseudomonas acidophila or Nocardia. So the bacterial species which, is, which divides by fragmentation, it is option number D that is Nocardia species. Now this uh, Nocardia species, they are known to reproduce by fragmentation process. So, uh, where what happens in this, uh, the filamentous cell, they breaks into smaller, uh, we can say rod shapes or, or it can be cocoidal cells, cocoid cells. So, each of uh, which can grow into a new organisms. So, over here, my correct option is D, that is Nocardia species. Question number three, Rhodopseudomonas acidophila, they reproduce by which of the following methods? So options are binary fission, budding, fragmentation or spirulation. So this Rhodopseudomonas acidophila, basically they reproduce by the binary fission method. So what happens in this, uh, uh, a single cell, it gets divided into two identical daughter cells. So over here, my correct option will be A, that is binary fission. Question number four, the synthesis of new membrane during the reproduction in gram-positive cells is performed by which of the following organelles? So options are nucleus, mesosomes, endoplasmic reticulum or cytoplasmic membrane. So this uh, synthesis of a new membrane material uh, during the reproduction in gram-positive cells, these are performed by the mesosomes. So over here my correct option is B. So actually these mesosomes, these are the invaginations of cytoplasmic membrane. So, which are found in few uh, gram-positive cells. Now, uh, they are involved in various uh, cellular process, which we can say this includes the synthesis of new membrane material during the cell divisions. So, over here, my correct option is B, that is mesosomes. Next question. So, question number five. Equatorial rich formation in the cell wall, it takes place in which of the following bacteria? So, options are Streptomyces species, Bacillus subtilis, Streptococcus faecalis, or Escherichia coli. So, over here, my correct option is C, that is Streptococcus faecalis. Now, what does the term that is equatorial rich formation exactly means? So, it refers to the, I'll write over here, it refers to the localized thickening of the cell wall that occurs at the mid point of the cell wall of the cell uh, where we can say the division takes place of the cell where divi 
transformation takes place. Even this ridge, it is formed due to the, so this ridge is formed due to inward growth. Inward growth of the cell wall. And we can say, and the uh, membrane at the division septum, and the membrane at division septum. Now, in summary, we can say that this equatorial ridge, it is a critical structure in the cell wall of this uh, Streptococcus faecalis bacteria that facilitates the proper division and the formation of two uh, viable daughter cells. So, over here, my correct option is option number C, that is Streptococcus faecalis. Question number 6. When septum formation occurs near the pole of the cell, it results to the formation of daughter cells. These are known as, so these are basically known as mini cells. So over here, my correct option is option number C. Now, what are these mini cells? So actually, these are small, comma, enucleate cells which are produced when the division septums, they form uh, asymmetrically near the uh, near one of the pole of the parent cell. So over here, my correct option is C, that is a mini cells. So question number seven, a bleb or fold-like formation occurs in which of the following bacteria? So options are Rhodo, Pseudomonas, Acidophila, Bacillus subtilis, E. coli or Streptococcus faecalis. So over here, my correct option is B, that is, Bacillus subtilis. Now we know that this Bacillus subtilis it is a gram positive. It is a gram positive bacterium. Now this can form a bleb or a fold like membrane. Uh, particularly we can say during the so it can form a bleb or fold like membrane. Uh, particularly uh, during the uh, sporulation or under any stress, stress conditions. So during sporulation, or stress condition, stress condition, they basically forms this bleb or a fold-like membrane. Now, these structures, these are the part of the cell. So adapt, uh, we can say adaptation mechanisms and can be involved in the processes like uh, secretion or cell divisions. So, over here, my correct option is B, that is Bacillus subtilis. So, question number 8, which of the following does not occur during binary fissions in bacteria? So, options are cell elongation, cytokinesis, DNA duplication or spindle formation. So over here, my correct option is D, that is spindle formation. Now, what is the spindle formation? Actually, it is a process uh, which is associated with mitosis or meiosis in the eukaryotic cells. So it is associated with mitosis, meiosis in eukaryotes. Okay, now where the spindle formations, these are involved involved in the separations of the chromosomes. Now, bacteria, we, we know that these bacteria, these are prokaryotes. These are prokaryotes. So, over here, they do not undergo this meiosis and mitosis process. So, thus, the spindle formation will not take place uh, in this bacteria. So, over here, my correct option will be D, that is spindle formation. Next, question number 9. L monocytogenes can be isolated from. So, what does this L over here means? It means listeria. Listeria monocytogenes. Monocytogenes. 
So this Listeria monocytogenes, actually it is a bacterium that can be found in various environments like in, the, in milk or in the sewage. So over here my correct option is D. Uh, now it's actually a foodborne pathogen which is, which is capable of causing illness in human beings, particularly those who have a weakened immune systems. So over here, correct option is both A and B. They are they can be isolated from milk as well as from the sewage. Next question number ten: The diarrheal syndrome and the emetic syndrome are the characteristics of. So options are staphylococcal foot poisoning, salmonellosis, perfringent foot poisoning, or bacillus cereus foot poisoning. So over here, my correct option will be option number D, that is bacillus cereus foot poisoning. Now, actually, this Bacillus cereus, it is a bacteria that can produce two types of syndromes. One is this diarrheal syndrome and the another is this emetic syndrome. What does this emetic means? It's a vomiting syndrome. Now, this bacterium, even it can be found in the rice, in rice, pastas or other starchy food we can say better starchy foods that have been cooked and left for some time at the room temperature so over here my correct option is d that is bacillus cereus food poisoning question number 11 sea foods and sea water they may contain so options are vibrio vulnificus streptococcus fecalis aeromonas hydrophila or vibrio parahemolyticus now the sea food and sea water they may contain both the bacteria that is Vibrio vulnificus as well as Vibrio parahemolyticus. So it is a multiple select questions. It is a MSQ type question basically. So uh, these uh, two bacteria these are associated with seafood as well as sea water and even consumption of these in the form of raw or in uncooked food what happens seafood contaminated with these bacteria it can lead to various gastrointestinal illness in the humans and others. So over here correct option is A as well as option number D. Question number 12, a characteristic cysteine loop in the structure of the enterotoxin is seen in the toxins produced by, so options are Salmonella, Staphylococcus, Yersinia or Bacillus. So over here my correct option will be B that is Staphylococcus. Now actually they produces an enterotoxin that can, uh, that contains a characteristic cysteine loop in its structure. Now this enterotoxin is responsible for causing symptoms of this staphylococcal food poisoning uh, when it is injured. When uh, we can say uh, this is ingested in the contaminated food and uh, more specific we can say staphylococcus aureus. So over here correct option is B. Next question number 13. Question number 13, Compalobacter jejuni has been isolated from, so options are chicken carcasses, turkeys, pork sausages or all of the above. So this Compalobacter jejuni, it is a bacteria that is commonly associated with the poultry, turkeys and it is also associated with the meat sausages like this, pork sausages. So over here my correct option is option number D, that is all of the above. Now consumption of this undercooked or we can say contaminated poultry, it can cause infections in the human body. So correct option is D, that is all of the above. So question number 14, traveler's diarrhea is caused due to the toxins which are produced by so options are Clostridium, Bacillus, Escherichia or Yersinia. So this traveler disease, it is basically caused due to the toxins which are produced by option C, that is Escherichia coli, that is E. coli. Now this, uh, this E. coli strains that can produce the, actually these strains actually they produces the toxins, uh, enterotoxins, enterotoxins. Um, or we can more particularly say that they produces, these are enterotoxigenic. So these E. coli, that is ETEC, these are, uh, com these are a common cause of this traveler's disease. And these bacteria can contaminate a food or a water in areas which has poor sanitation, um, poor sanitation, so over here, correct option is C, that is E. coli. Now, 
Now, question number 15, the syndrome which result, uh, syndrome resulting from the ingestion of toxins in a mold contaminated food are, so is options are aspergillosis, enterotoxicosis, mycotoxicosis or neurotoxicosis. So over here, my correct option will be C, that is mycotoxicosis. So what is this mycotoxic, mycotoxicosis? Actually, it refers to the illness caused by the ingestion of toxins produced by the molds or that is fungi. Now these toxins, these are known as mycotoxins and even they can contaminate various foods uh, in the uh, mold by this mold growth which okay so over here my correct option is C that is mycotoxicosis. Question number 16. Alimentary toxic alokia is isolated from the grains which is produced by so options are alternaria, cladosporium, fusarium or all of the above. So over here my correct option will be C that is fusarium species. So in fusarium species it is a species of fungi. So it basically uh, produces mycotoxins toxins and these mycotoxins these are associated with this ATA that is elementary toxic alokia so this is associated with this ATA now these mycotoxins we can say example like uh, trichothesis so the trichothesis so these are contaminated by the grains and can cause severe illness in the human beings when it has been ingested. So over here my correct option will be C that is fusarium. Question number 17. A toxic substance which is detected in the blue cheese is. So options are lutoskyrin, rocifortin, patulin or ocratoxin. So over here my correct option will be B that is rocifortin. Now, what is this rookie 14? Actually, this rookie 14, it is a mycotoxin. It is a mycotoxin, which has been produced by the mold, uh, for ex produced by penicillium, penicillium rookie 14. So, it is produced by this mold species now whereas this lutoskyrin actually uh, the, it is also a mycotoxin which is produced by fungi like aspergillus or um, penicillium species and it is primarily associated with the contaminated stored grains so it is associated with the stored grains now this patulin so this patulin actually it is also a mycotoxin which is commonly found in the uh, I'll write over here moldy fruits moldy fruits of, of which is produced by these species like penicilliums or aspergillus species. Next that is ocratoxin. So this ocratoxin it is also a mycotoxin which is produced by the moles of this aspergillus or penicillium species and it can produce a contam and it can be produced um, found in the contamination of various food products like the in the I'll write over here grains. It is found in uh, the contaminated grains or um, coffees. or wines etc so over here my correct option will be which is associated which is detected in blue cheese it is rookie 14 option number b will be my correct option question number 18 alpha toxins are produced by so options are a flavors a parasiticus a niger or both a and b now this alpha toxin what is this alpha toxin exactly it is a toxic compound which is produced by various uh, which is produced by the species of fungi, especially the Aspergillus species. Aspergillus species. Now, what exactly those species are? Those are 
aspergillus flavors and aspergillus parasiticus. So over here my correct option will be D that is both A and B. Now these aspergillus flavors and as well as this aspergillus parasiticus species, these fungi can contaminate various agricultural crops, tree nuts, corns. Uh, so these are specially grown under the warm and a humid environmental conditions. So over here my correct option will be D that is both A and Question number 19. Soft drinks are tested for chemicals when they are contained in a. So options are glass bottle, tetra pack, metal container or none of them. So over here, okay, you have also seen in the market that these soft drinks, these are basically contained in the metal containers. Example, the aluminium cans. Okay, now these are commonly used for packaging the soft drinks. Now these containers, they undergo testings to ensure that they meet the regular, uh, regulatory standards and these are safe for storing these beverages or fruit juices. So these uh, testings may include the uh, checks for chemical leachings. So these can include chemical leaching checks. from the contain uh, from the uh, container material into the drink now it, even it can ensure that the beverage remains safe for the consumption so over here my correct option will be c that is metal container next question question 20 samples of suspected perishable foods must be kept cold so options are during collection of the samples during analysis during transit to the laboratory or there is no need to keep the samples cold so over here my correct option will be option number C that is during transit to laboratory. What happens these perishable food samples this can be prone to various bacterial growth or they can even get spoiled if it is not stored properly. Now keeping the samples cold during the transit it helps to slow down the growth of the bacteria and even it preserves the integrity of the samples until it is reached to the laboratory for the analysis purpose. That's why the over here my correct option will be option number C that is transit uh, during transit to laboratory. So question number 21, neurological symptoms which is caused by this puffer fish poisonings, these are because of, so options are shellfish toxins, tetrodon toxins, both A and B or none of them. So over here my correct option will be B that is tetrodon toxins. Now this tetrodon toxins, these are also known as tetrodotoxin. In short, we say it as TT. X. Now, so this is actually a primary toxin which is responsible for this neurological symptoms and which is associated with this puffer fish poisonings. Now, this potent neurotoxins, what happens? They basically blocks the sodium channel, sodium channels in nerve cells. What will happen? It will lead to the paralysis or other neurological effects. Whereas this shellfish toxins, it is not uh, associated with the neurological toxins, uh, especially which is associated with the puffer fish uh, poisonings. So over here, my correct option will be B, that is tetradon toxins. Question number 22, the predominant symptoms in the lower gastrointestinal tract infection is, so options are fever, abdominal cramp, diarrhea, chills or malaysia. So over here, my correct option will be option number B. So this lower gastrointestinal uh, tract infection, typically it manifests with the symptoms such as abdominal cramps and diarrhea. So these symptoms, they are often accompanied by this gastrointestinal disturbances, such as we can say, for example, uh, the nausea, vomiting, or sometimes fevers. Uh, while uh, this fever, chills, and this malaise, it can occur in the infections, but abdominal cramp and this diarrhea, the, it is a hallmark symptom for this lower gastrointestinal infection track infections over here correct option will be that is abdominal cramp and diarrhea question 23 aeromonas hydrophila they causes fishiness in so option is 
milk, cheese, butter or cream. So over here correct option is C that is in butter. So this butter they may gain such flavor from the absorptions of flavor which is developed in the butter during the microbial growth. So this basically this fishiness fishiness it is caused by the organism that is Aeromonas hydrophila. Now there are other uh, like uh, Easter like flavor. First one is this. Secondly like Easter's like flavor which is caused by um, Pseudomonas Nas Fraki. Other like rancid flavors, rancid odor, better to say, caused by these uh, lipase, lipase producing organisms. So over here for this fishiness flavor, is caused in the butter so correct option is C that is butter. Question 24 uh, vacuum packet chicken they contain spoilage organisms in enterobacter pseudomonas clostridium or bacillus. So over here my correct option will be that is pseudomonas species. Now this pseudomonas species these are commonly associated with the spoilage of vacuum packaged meats uh, including this chickens. So these bacterium they can thrive in low oxygen environment such as this vacuum package so they can cause even they can cause the off flavors odors or visual changes in the meat as they grow and they metabolize now proper handling is needed even storage refrigeration of this vacuum package these are essential to minimize this risk of this uh, spoilage organisms so over here my correct option will be option number b that is pseudomonas species Question number 25. Sweet curdling occurs at an early stage of. So options are proteolysis, sarring, lipolysis or curdling. So achha, what exactly is this sweet curdling first? So sweet curdling actually it refers to the separation of curds from milk in the milk uh, without a sar test. So it's without a sar test. So this occurs during the initial stage of the Achha, you comment me down the correct option for this question at what stage now uh, when the milk protein so such as this casein it undergoes an enzymatic hydrolysis so it undergoes an enzymatic matic hydrolysis Now this process is even different from the uh, sarring which is involved in the fermentation of lactose to lactic acid bacteria, and it even leads to the formation of lactic acid and a sar test in the dairy products. So this process is even different. Whereas what is this lipolysis process? We know that this lipolysis basically it is it leads to the breakdown of the fats and the curdling in the formation of curds. It typically is associated with the coagulation of milk protein we can say. And uh, so you comment me down the correct option for this question. Next. So with this we have completed 25 few important multiple choice questions for the entrance examination of CFTRI and if you want to practice more questions then you can install our app uh, that is Foottech online app which is in the play store and you can practice more questions over here. So if you find any of the doubt regarding any of the questions then you can comment us down below and if you want more such videos then subscribe to our YouTube channel for more such videos and if you like our video do share with your friends. So till then thank you and enjoy learning.